Hi everybody, my name's Paul and this is Rio Driving School. So if you're preparing for a driving test in Featherstone then I've got a little treat for you tonight. I'm going to be running through another test route uh, that one of my pupils did recently. We'll be turning left out of the gate, so follow along. Okay, so we're going to be bringing the car forward, turning left out of the gate. I'm not sure at the moment where we're going um, because I've not done this yet, so we'll find out together. All right, follow along. So, to the end of the road, remember it's a national speed limit road, so you've got to be very careful here and make absolutely certain you're not going to cause anybody to slow down, swerve, or swear. Else that's an instant foul because it could be quite dangerous along here. Okay, getting the speed up to a national speed limit. And I've got my eye on that one in front there with his indicator on, just in case he decides to go when it's not quite safe. We're going to be turning right shortly down Greenfield Lane in about 500 yards, so mirror. Okay, we've got the work situation going on, so I'm expecting to see workmen in the road quite possibly. Yes, it's about six o'clock at night right now, but you never know, we might have somebody working in the road. So mirror, and bring the speed down. Okay, we've got standing traffic in front. I'm just reducing the speed a little bit more. We were into the 30 mile an hour zone, again, mirror. And when I stop the car, when remember this, when you are stopping in standing traffic, remember to allow enough room to um, get around that vehicle if they store, if they break down or something like that. Uh, so we call that the tires on tarmac rule. Make sure there is enough room for uh, you so you can see the tires of the vehicle on the road in front. Um, think also emergency services, for example. Uh, if there's an ambulance coming through here and you need to move to the side of the road, giving a little bit of space in front is going to allow you to have that flexibility to do that. Uh, also remember before we do move the car forward, just check both door mirrors now for, of course, we've got the cyclists and the people on motorbikes on the other side. We call that Bob and Tom, boy on a bike or a twit on a moped. So look out for those. Of course, we might have Dexter the Texter behind us as well. So be aware of that. Be aware of your surroundings. Lights are still on red. A uh, good idea just to sit here with the hands on the wheel anyway, because if you do get a hit from behind, you don't want to be able to be getting pushed into that steering wheel or into the glass work there. So you can just sit here relaxed and just keep your eye on what's going on. Okay, lights have just gone to amber. I'm checking for Bob and Tom now, and I'm bringing the car forward into second gear. Get that right signal on and position in the hatched area here nice and early we're going to be going on the wrong side of the road as we're instructed to by the uh, the arrow there and mirror and remember don't get carried away down this road greenfield lane i see a lot of people exceeding the speed limit it is strictly 30 mile an hour i'm just going to bring the sun visor down uh, i'm just staying in third along this road here Remember we've got a downhill gradient going on, it's very easy to gather speed, especially if you select fourth gear. So mirror, we've got the pedestrians on the near side, we've got a height restriction in front of us, i.e. the bridge. Um, we have priority on the over the oncoming traffic, mirror, uh, but I never ever expect it. I'm always planning to stop if I need to. So I'm checking my mirrors, I'm positioning out now reasonably early so that people can see me. And we're going to be doing a left turn here, so I'm checking that near side mirror. I've got that signal on into second gear. I can see the car also in front of me is also turning into this road. And I'm just holding back now for the Mercedes in front there. Remember, don't cause anybody to slow down, swerve, or swear. So I'm always covering my brake and my clutch as I go around corners in case that situation comes up and I need to stop. Usually, an examiner is going to ask you to pull up on the left along here. Uh, we'll do that now, so mirrors, get that signal on for anyone behind me, clutch down, 
this is a good place to stop. Remember rule 243 of the highway code, don't stop or park opposite or within 10 meters of a junction. Okay, so now I'm getting my feet ready to move again. I've got the white one behind me, so I'm not gonna put the signal on. I see a lot of people putting that signal on and then they're looking around to see if they can go. But if that white jag had stopped for me just now, if it stopped to let me pull out, I've just inconvenienced somebody. I've just made someone make a decision they shouldn't have to make. So don't go doing that. Get the feet ready, start looking around, wait for anybody that might be coming. So there's a white one coming now. I'm just gonna wait for him, I'm just gonna let him go. Remember any pause to this situation, I'm gonna check that blind spot again. Signal can go on now and I'll release the handbrake and off we go. Not caused any problems to anybody. Into third gear, going along now. I can see brake lights in the distance there, one behind me, and pedestrians on the near side mirror. Got one looking to cross the road in front, or at least he did step in the road briefly there, mirror. The one behind me is closing the gap a little bit now, and I'm coming towards those traffic lights. On the left hand side here is a nice pub. Sometimes examiners might ask you to go on there. Uh, to do a, a bay park maneuver of some sort, whether that's reversing into a space or uh, driving forwards into one. Anyway, I'm just gonna hold back, remember that tires and tarmac rule. Back into first gear, and just keep an eye on what's going on. We're gonna be going left here, but I have seen examiners ask you to turn right. So you gotta take in all the available information. And there are signs out there telling you where to position the vehicle along the dual carriageway. Anyway, I'm waiting for these lights to change. So I'm just making myself aware of my surroundings, looking for anybody on two wheels. Remember, we're always looking for the vulnerable road users. And of course, I'm not gonna be accelerating like a bad out of hell around here as soon as my lights change to green, because you should always be checking the people, other road users have stopped, have actually stopped and they're not actually jumping the traffic lights. So think about emergency services, think about learner drivers or people getting home from work and they're just not stopping when the amber light shows. So I've got to my eye on the one behind me, it's quite close. I'm just setting a little bit of gas now so don't stall. And I'm going to bring the car forward, put that left signal on, into second gear, put my eye on that one there and I'm just bringing it round into lane one. Remember stay in lane one. The only reason you should be in lane two is if you're preparing to turn right. And in fact, actually, my Tom Tom is telling me I'm going right at the roundabout. So mirrors, I'm gonna get that signal on. I'm gonna allow other people to understand that uh, signal before I start moving on. Don't concertina all your actions together. Put the signal on and just wait for a moment. Make sure your signal, your intention is understood. I'm now gonna put a new signal on because the signal should mean one thing, not two. So I've separated my signals out from changing lanes to turning right at the roundabout. I'm just gonna hold back at the roundabout here. The into first gear ready. A Little bit of traffic tonight because we're uh, just at the tail end of the rush hour. I'm just gonna plan a handbrake. I've got the gas set. The benefit of this is I can pull away much, much quickly and I don't risk stalling. Okay, check that near side mirror early. It's a spiral roundabout. I will be covering spiral roundabouts on another video soon can't wait to do that with you. Got one behind me closing up the gap. I wouldn't be surprised if they're gonna go around, but I'm just gonna take it easy along here. It is still 30 miles an hour along this road. So just be very careful that you don't get carried away or you don't feel like you're being bullied into going faster than you should. The examiner will have no hesitation but to send you straight back to the test center with a fail on the sheet. We're gonna be turning left at the traffic lights and mirrors. Signals going on. Remember, cover the clutch and the brake here. Just bring the speed down. I'm going to select second gear to give me plenty of control. Let's go around this corner. More engine braking in case I need to stop. Check my middle mirror, my right door mirror before I accelerate. And I'm just going to hold back because that buzz is coming onto my side of the road. I'm not in any rush. Mirror again. A little bit of acceleration now. And I'm looking as far as I can down that road. I can see the park van on the near side. We've got the pedestrian. We've also got a warning for a school. Yes, the schools are shut now, um, but somebody might have hired that hall out for a karate class or some other activity. So we never ever assume mirror. And I'm just following the dual carriageway down. Yes, this is a dual carriageway bringing the car down the road, now at the end of dual carriageway, we've got the pedestrian in the road there, mirror, 
again, I make no assumptions about people. I don't know if he's had a drink and if he's going to stumble into the road, so I'm just taking my time and I'll keep a wary eye on him. We've got the sharp deviation sign. See the black and white sign at the bottom of the road? That's like take the next road on the left. Well, of course, we don't use the signal. So I'm slowing down. I'm getting a bra getting the brakes on. I'm bringing it into second gear, making sure the clutch is up. So I've got loads of control as we go around this corner. Don't get trying to go around there in third gear. There's just no need. And if there is a problem there, you're going to get into a right panic. Okay, I've got the cyclist in front of me that's occupying a little bit too much of the road, in my opinion, some nearer. Can't really see a, a way around him at the moment because of the pedestrian refuge. I'm checking my mirrors to see if anyone's going to try and get around me. I'm going to take second gear and hold the car back. I'm showing a little bit more discipline here. Uh, I'm looking for an opportunity to go. We've got one approaching mirror. Okay, the bicycle is going to go around that wide one. I'll check my right door mirror. I'm looking to get around. I'm not putting the signal on yet because I don't want people thinking I'm turning right. So I'm just holding back, exercising plenty of discipline here. The signal is going to go on any moment. Here it goes. And I'm in second gear, so I've got loads of acceleration. But remember, don't go over 30 miles an hour. So I was in that second gear, so I've got plenty, plenty of energy to get the car moving. It's a good strong gear, good for acceleration and also good for braking. We're gonna be getting up to the roundabout and it looks like we're turning right there. This is a horrible roundabout. Get plenty of practice at this roundabout. It's at the end of Marsh Lane and we're turning right, signposted Wolverhampton. It's a horribly busy roundabout. My advice to you is look for helpers. Your help is coming from 12 o'clock. Okay, so looking for helpers, looking for vehicles at 12 o'clock that might be of some kind of assistance to you in blocking off people coming along the uh, Stafford Road now. Okay, I've got the gas on and I've actually been given a gift because there's nobody there. Check that near side mirror. I'm going to stop steering now and let the car spiral across the road. The left signal's going on. I'm not accelerating. I'm also expecting uh, traffic on the left hand side here I can see it so I'll check the right door mirror I've got my signal on and there are loads of gas get over there before I cause anybody any problems now I'll put my check my mirrors I'm gonna be getting back into lane one in a moment but I'm just gonna wait for this Fiesta to get actually a Nissan Note to get out of the way and I'm gonna get past this silver one so check the near side mirror signals going on just to re just to reinforce my intention that I'm back to the left lets everybody know what you're doing and I'm looking as far as I can up the road remember early vision early decision the sooner you spot problems the sooner you can start dealing with it don't go accelerating too hard when you're not really all that experienced because you're going to need a little bit more thinking time I can see the traffic in front of me is moving quite slowly which is a little bit frustrating now we're doing about 25 miles an hour on, on this 40 mile an hour road and if you notice, I'm not really interested in closing the gap up. I want options in front of me. I want to be able to see what's going on. I don't want to have to brake sharply if something in front happens. I've got my eye on the one behind me. And uh, a little bit more acceleration now. I can put it into fourth gear. I know we're coming up to a roundabout, so I'm checking all my mirrors. I'm finding out what's going on. Remember, know your surroundings. And I'm just covering the brake, covering the clutch, ready. I don't know what gear I'm going to need until I get there. The one in front's turning left. I'm looking at 12 o'clock and I'm looking to the right. I can see the blue Fiesta coming round, so I know I'm going to have to go much, much slower. I'm not going to be able to keep the car moving until this one in front moves. Okay, they're out of the way now. Check that near side mirror. Into second gear, and I'm going to put the signal on at the bollard. Aim for the bollards when you're dealing with the roundabouts. And I'm looking further up ahead. Uh, we've got the buzz that's just pulled into the road in front of me. Here would be a good chance to show the examiner that you can get round problems. Okay, so yes, you can use lane two to overtake. Don't go crazy about it though. Don't stay in this lane for too long. Check that near side mirror and get back to the left. Okay, don't get showing off and getting yourself stuck in lane two. It's not necessary. 
but you do need to be thinking about going around buzzes on your route because if they pull over and you're forced to pull over it's just not good if that happens a couple of times you need to be trying to get around them to be making progress all the time following the road ahead here looking at 12 o'clock it's completely clear i'm taking third gear checking that near side mirror covering the brake in case the grey one pulls out in front of me and now a little brisk acceleration taking it all the way up to 40 again we've got another roundabout coming up so checking all the mirrors bringing it round okay I'm looking at 12 o'clock nice and early I can see traffic moving across the roundabout can't quite see because the van's in the way I'm holding back now because there's a van crossing the roundabout here this is an interesting one I can use this van next to me like a shield there are pros and cons to doing that the pro of course is I don't need to worry about what's coming but the uh, the, uh, the problem is if they suddenly break because they see something that I can't see, like for, for example a motorbike coming around that roundabout really, really fast, if they decide to break, I'm gonna be left exposed. So I would only do things like that if you are confident that you, you can either get the car going fast or you can stop. So you need to pay close attention to what's going on next to you if you're gonna do that. Don't go trying to keep up with a Porsche if, if you're using that as a, as a shield. I wouldn't recommend that at all. Anyway, I'm checking all the mirrors and following the road ahead. Notice looking ahead now, we've got the buzz lane on the near side. And the, the signs say that it's in operation between seven in the morning and seven at night. It's still 6.25, so I need to be using lane two. You will always be needing to use lane two on this particular route. However, uh, if it was 7.01 at night, this becomes a dual carriageway uh, with two lanes, and you would need to be in that bus and taxi lane at 7.01 at night. Uh, and all day Sunday, of course, Monday to Saturday, after seven o'clock at night or before seven in the morning. Anyway, on with the drive. We're gonna be following the signs to Canic now. We can't cross this solid white line. I'm checking my near side mirror because I'm gonna get across now. I've signaled for the one behind me. Remember to cancel it because you don't want people thinking you're going into home bargains, else they might pull out in front of you. And they're gonna put a new signal on here to come into the uh, into the slip road. It's clearly marked Canic on there. It's not a problem if you can't get across. The examiner will just keep getting you to follow the road ahead and you'll probably be going left at the next roundabout and they'll find a new route for you. So don't get panicking um, too much about that. Mirrors into third and I can see brake lights ahead so I'm just covering the brake and I'm, I'm just keeping the speed under control so I can brake easy if I have to. Again, I've got my eye on the white one behind me. They haven't closed the gap too much. I've got my eye on the guy on the road uh, with the equipment there, the temporary traffic lights and uh, mirrors. And uh, now I can have a little bit of acceleration. I'm gonna take you up to 30 and only 30. Got brake lights, so mirror. Remember, when you see brake lights, check your mirrors because they're slowing down for something that you might not be able to see. So it's called an observation link. Okay, we've got the buzz. Uh, if, um, if it was me at the head of this line of traffic here, I'd be trying to get around this buzz when it's safe. Of course, we've got the problems along this road, the pedestrian refuges as well. It's quite a wide road, so we need to be careful. You cannot go around those pedestrian refuges on the wrong side of the road. The arrow means you must go around it on the left-hand side, proceed in the direction of the arrow. Okay, so I'm keeping my eye on the pedestrians. So the footpath, I can see the lady who might want to step out here. She looks like she's looking to cross the road. I've got my eye under the van, over and through. Think over, under and through. I call it loud. So look over, under and through for any movement, anything that's going to give you a problem. And just keep your brake and your clutch covered. The car won't stall, it will slow down and then you'll be using the overrun of the engine if it goes slow enough. But don't worry, it's not going to stall. All modern cars have overall mirror. Got my eye on the one in front of me, crossing my path now, and, and the Audi on the right. And I'm just keeping it in third gear, keeping the brake covered, 
Uh, the traffic's moving along quite slowly. I suspect it's because of the buzz, the distance. The buzz has just turned off now. So mirror, um, I'm thinking the traffic might start um, getting going again now. Uh, mirror again, keep an eye on the one behind me as I slow down for the, the traffic lights. Remember, when you see traffic lights, it's very difficult to slow down, even if you are accelerating just a little bit. So my, my suggestion there is just to cover the clutch, cover the brake, allow the, the engine to help you slow the car down. It's much, much easier to slow the car down if you're covering the clutch and covering the brake. Also remember an amber traffic light means stop and wait. There is no difference between an amber light and a red light. Most people think it means get ready to go and it doesn't. Check the highway code. Just checking the crossing here for anyone who may emerge. And again, I've got my eye on the footpath, I've got my eye on the cars that might be trying to reverse off the driveways. Yes, it's silly, but people will reverse onto the main road. Up to the mini roundabout ahead, and we're going to be going left there. So I'm checking my mirrors, getting a little bit closer before I tell the one behind. I don't want him to think I'm going in there. Anyway, signal can go on now, and I've got my eye on the traffic on the right hand side. Remember, we need white traffic on our right. Can't see a problem with that. I'm just going to keep going. Check my right door mirror as I go around this car. Could be a taxi or something. And we've even got the van coming onto the road in front of me, and we've got the pedestrian on the right hand side. So, mirror, the one behind's closing the gap a little bit. Uh, and we've got the traffic lights on red. I'm going to try and get there for green. There's no sense in racing up to traffic lights just to hit the brakes. So by the time I get there, hopefully I'll hardly have to brake at all, or we can just keep the car moving. Anyway, yeah, we're on green now. I'm just going to be slowing it down a little bit more and taking a stronger gear so that we uh, can get the car moving. And again, I'm not going to be accelerating just in case the lights snap. I'm also looking right ahead, left ahead and right, and then a little brisk acceleration just to clear the junction now. And then we're going up to the next roundabout. I suspect an examiner would still be saying to you, follow the signs to Canic. So remember, look nice and early. Uh, we're going right at the roundabout towards Canic. It's actually the third exit. That little stump at the bottom of the sign is an exit so it's the third exit so mirrors signals on one behind is far too close so i'm bringing in the brakes early i'm taking second gear i'm checking the near side mirror i'm stopping steering i'm going to signal now i'm doing everything i can to reinforce my intention a little bit of acceleration now into third gear and just maintaining 30 miles an hour don't go any faster than that along here. The one behind can overtake if they want to. We've got pedestrian activity in the road, mirror. We also got along here uh, the staggered crossroads. So we've got the junctions here coming up. We've also got, see that? We've also got the van coming into the road. We've got a filling station and a McDonald's. So there's a lot that can go wrong along here. And remember, people don't use the traffic lights or the zebra crossings to cross the road all the time so don't expect them to we're following the road ahead towards Canag. yes it's the third exit but look where the placement of that arrow is it's 12 o'clock so if there's no additional road markings or signs you'll you need to position the vehicle on the left hand side of the road so i've just checked my near side mirror the one in front the one behind me is now going to come past me here you've got to stay by the curb throughout. Don't get taken a straight line at the roundabout. So I'm going. I'm taking a, taking it nice and close all the way around. The signal's going on, so that yellow one can make a little bit of progress. And then mirror, and I'm just gently, gently braking so the one behind me doesn't run into the back of me. Okay, so just reducing the speed a little bit. Clutch can go down for a controlled coast. And I'm just positioning slightly close to the line so I don't need to work too hard to get around that sign later. And I'm just gonna stop there and apply the handbrake, put myself into neutral. Keep my hands on the wheel, but rest my legs. And just take a breather, just for a minute. I'm looking down the road. I can't quite anticipate what's going on yet. I don't, I don't see traffic coming through at the moment so I don't know what's going on if these lights are going to 
change for me or if I'm waiting for traffic to come through um, but at this moment again I just keep my hands on the wheel you'd be tempted just to rest your hands on your lap uh, but if you get into that routine of just chilling out sooner or later when somebody gets it wrong behind you, you you're gonna have nothing to stop yourself going forward and into the steering wheel it's gonna hurt your chest so I just keep my hands on the wheel for safety reasons if you're consistently doing it it becomes a habit um, so you won't need to remember to do it when it matters yeah we've got cars coming through now so it was unlucky that we only just missed the green light a few moments ago um, and yeah we're almost through with this little route tonight I hope you found it interesting um, remember going back to my other video about gas before bite I see a lot of people getting ready with first gear and then I start bringing the clutch up to the bite no need to do that you're not going to be rolling back here I want you to set the gas first always set the gas first so that when you start lifting the clutch up we're much much less likely to stall and it makes for a much smoother transition so just looking ahead I can see the last of the traffic coming through now I'm anticipating that we're going to be getting it going again in a minute so I'm checking both my door mirrors looking for Bob and Tom and off we go release the handbrake bringing it forward now into second gear and coming uh, down the road I'm not going to go too fast um, I'm just taking my time don't want to get carried away just on the last straight even if someone behind you keeps closing the gap don't let them bully you into uh, going faster than you actually should okay and keep wary on the junctions and of course the pub as well if people have had a drink tonight they might not be quite as sharp as they should be i'm going to put the left signal on there because we're turning left immediately after the traffic light we've got the anti-skid surface here um, reducing the speed a little bit more into second gear lifting the clutch up before we uh, go around the bend remember we cannot coast around this corner it's potentially dangerous into uh, third gear now and i'm just taking my time i would say 20 25 miles an hour is plenty here because there's a lot of things that can go wrong especially during the day when you're going to be doing your driving test we've got the school where we've got uh, pedestrians uh, that, that use this during the day because of that school we've got the junctions and we've got more road works ahead so i'm just taking my time hopefully i want to arrive to drive and just see in front of people will just pull out in front of you so you've got to be uh, aware of that i'm never surprised when things like that happen straight into first gear again apply the handbrake this time i would anticipate rolling back um, remember on that gradient so treat this like a little you know like a mini hill start a little bit of gas find the bite and you can just feel the car stiffen keep your feet still when it's time to go lead with the gas pedal before you start lifting the clutch pedal up the one behind me is very very close so I can't afford to screw this up and stall it so a little bit more gas now release the handbrake we've got two on a bike coming round okay into second gear check that near side mirror and I'm just into third gear now coming around the corner and um, we've got the mini roundabout coming up very soon so mirror again off the gas do this one in second gear don't faff around with signals it's just not needed do not go over the roundabout like the one in front just did that is uh, that is an offence so we're going to go around it properly don't need to be on the gas though but you must go around it properly and into third again don't get carried away along here looks like a lovely uh, lovely country road but it is just 30 miles an hour very very easy to get carried away around here so we're going to bring the car forward, we're going to be turning left at the mini roundabout, I think it's a mini roundabout at the bottom of the road, I'm not sure, actually I think it's a proper roundabout, I can see brake lights and mirror, okay the one is coming onto the main road in front of me now, and yes it is a mini roundabout, so 
the middle mirror, left mirror, the one behind me is at a respectable distance. I'm just going to bring the brakes in slightly now just to control the speed. The signal's going on. I can't see what's going on to the right, so I'm always expecting uh, something fast from the right, like a motorbike. So I'm going to take that second gear. I'm happy with that. There's nothing there. I'm going to bring it round. Uh, an examiner might ask you to pull up along here. Remember, it, the cycle lane is broken, so you can pull over in there, no problem at all. I'm just going to bring the car forward. I'm going to be looking for the next road on the right. Again, a lovely wide road. I see a lot of people uh, getting into fourth gear along here and going a little bit too fast. It's a silly way to uh, fail your driving test, so just be very careful. Uh, have a look around and think why is it 30? Why has it been set to 30? There's a lot of housing around here, there's a school nearby, we've got the cycle lane there. So all these are clues. So in second gear, bringing it round. And we're going down the, down the grade into the crossroads and we're turning right. So mirrors. I suspect, although I can't remember asking, um, an examiner might be bringing a pupil here along this road because along the left hand side there's usually parked cars here and it's a little bit awkward uh, because it's so narrow as well but they normally like to get you to do uh, a parallel park so make sure you you're able to deal with parallel parks in roads where there's a bit of a gradient going on where you got to reverse up a hill slightly uh, and where the road is a little bit narrow so you've got to consider are you going to hit the curb on the other side so don't get those practiced checking the mirrors delaying the signal to pass that junction into first gear taking our time no need to rush anything mirrors sometimes they get you to do the parallel park along here there's a lot of a lot of cars along this road as well um, the situation's a little bit easier in some respects because of the gradient and the fact that the road is a little bit wider at the end of the road we're going to be going right so mirrors cover the clutch in the brake get that signal on now Got the one from the right coming along, so I'm just going to arrive in first gear, taking my time, looking to the left. There's one approaching, a little bit of gas so we don't stall. Up to the roundabout, turning left, so mirrors, looking to the right, no problem. Bring it round, check my mirrors before I accelerate up to 30. We've got the junction on the left, so mirror. Whenever you see these triangular warning signs, always check your mirrors because um, you might need to brake. Then something at that junction might happen. Remember, slow on the road is warning you of a problem you can't yet see. It's never going to warn you about a problem you can see, but a problem you can't yet see again. So slow doesn't mean start using the brake. I would simply ease off on the accelerator and be prepared to use the brake if something develops. Anyway, mirror, lights are on green, and they've quickly changed, which is why I had my brake covered. If I was accelerating then, there's no way I'd be able to stop in time, uh, or I'd end up having to do an emergency stop, and then I'd risk the car behind me going straight into the back. Not a good situation. So handbrake on seems to me as though there's a lot of roadworks going on around at the moment so again when you're doing your driving test on the morning get down here early have a look along the a449 stafford road see if they put cones out have a look, look along some of these other roads where we've been tonight see what the situation is because you don't want any nasty surprises to deal with you're going to be stressed enough as it is without having to deal with uh, unusual changes to the road layout anyway I'm going to be getting ready to go in a moment I can see um, there's a few more vehicles to come through yet and brakes on the clutch is down my right foot is covering the gas pedal so that I'm able to get it going again fairly quickly and I'm just going to put my hand on the handbrake ready You remember what I'm looking for before I release the land brake? Yeah, that's right, Bob and Tom. So I'm looking for the cyclist and the person on the motorbike on the other side as well. I've got 
the gas set now. I'm expecting the car to, uh, I'm expecting us to get it going any moment now. So checking all the mirrors. So the one behind me is really a little bit too close really. So that situation, you always want to have the gas set. If I was to stall with him being so close, he'd see me start to move forwards. He would probably start coming forwards as well. And if I stall, remember we don't have brake lights telling him to stop. So it's very, very easy for someone to run straight into the back again. So always set that gas. Checks are done, bringing the car forward. The arrows telling us to proceed on the right, so mirrors. Over onto this side now, a little bit of acceleration, just a 30. Check that near side mirror. Don't go racing up to the national speed limit sign, mirror. And now I can go for it. Now I've already gone through the gate, I can go and get it going. Okay, there's no one coming towards me, so I can go in the middle of this road if I want to. Just remember to bring the car back again before you get to the bridge. Okay, something's coming. Okay, one emerging mirror. And we're going to be pulling over just after the uh, test centre on the right where we started tonight. In this little lay by here. Get the signal on. Yes, there's no one around to benefit, but it doesn't hurt. You're not going to get penalised for signaling to the invisible man. And that is it. Let me just turn it around a bit more so we can talk without the sun being in my face. I hope you enjoyed that tonight. As I get more test routes uh, coming in, I'm going to be demonstrating that drive for you. Um, my last TomTom -tom that had quite a few routes in there, it died a death uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm just collecting up the new routes again now. But if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And if there are any specific videos that you want me to create for you, also list them below uh, I want to give you the content that you're looking for okay anyway good luck with all your own preparations for your driving tests and stay safe on the road